Hey, good to see you again. I just got an email from a photographer and he said that I'm so lucky for where I live because I'm so close to all of these locations like the picture behind me where there are big vistas to photograph, beautiful landscape photos everywhere. And he said that he doesn't have anything to photograph where he lives. And I'm not going to name you, but I am going to call you out because you do have beautiful things to photograph regardless of where you live. And I have a new principle for you to maybe think about when you don't have anything big to take photos of, you're not able to find that big main subject for a new composition and you're staying home, then go small. Think much smaller. So you're not looking for the big mountains, the lakes, the rivers, the waterfalls, but you're looking for the small things that are just unusual and unique, things that you don't normally notice when you're out and about walking around. So I'm going to show you some examples uh, that have been taken by photographers who are in the Facebook group that I administer, which is called the Tim's Photos Academy. I'm going to share my screen and show you some awesome examples that people within the Facebook group have been shooting and they've used the principle of go small. So you could be right in the middle of the downtown core of the big city where you live and you can still find really interesting things to shoot if you go small. And I'm not necessarily just advocating for macro photos here. Uh, you don't need to have a macro lens. If you're shooting with your cell phone, you can even use your cell phone to go small and take pictures of small images. But let me get started and show you what I'm talking about. Let's start out with a photo from Wasa Solvi from Norway and uh, beautiful little mushroom caps. Look at the contrast here. Mushroom is in focus, background is out of focus. Perfect example of going small. And this one, just fall colors. It's raining. There are some drips on the edges of the leaves and having that background out of focus. And keep in mind, this is not a macro shot. You can take this with your normal lens, just zoom in. And of course, keep in mind that as you zoom in you create less and less depth of field so that it will create this effect of having a sharp foreground and a blown out background which provides contrast in your photo talk about a gorgeous photo right here you don't need to travel anywhere in order to get a shot like this from barb Petchus, she has two photos here a gorgeous sunflower and this one here that i absolutely love look at the just the beautiful color tones there's it's so simple there are two color tones it's just the red and the yellow and it creates this sense of contrast through color i'm guessing that barb probably arranged the photo like this put the one leaf on top of the other super artistic absolutely incredible and this would look so good printed and hung on the wall so yeah, gorgeous. No need to travel. Uh, from Claudio Cara, uh, just some mushrooms on a log. And it's just an interesting photo that you don't normally notice. So we have three from Eliana Whitwer. Here is her first, a flower on a vine. Second is this beautiful rose and incredible contrast through color with a red foreground and a black background. And finally, this feather into a sunset. Now, again, you could be in the downtown core and as long as you have a clear space of sky, you could take this shot. You can take it anywhere. Uh, from Greg Mayerhofer, this little, I don't know what it is, a lily of some kind in water absolutely beautiful just look at those curved lines main subject in the middle of the photo essentially stopping at the top one third wow what what more can you want uh from heather wilson who is from vancouver british columbia she used her uh, glass ball which just creates that really interesting effect. All these beautiful shades of red, yellow, green uh, that are sharp and in focus. And with this being the ball being the main subject and then blown out background so that it creates that sense of contrast and we know what we're supposed to be looking at. Just a gorgeous photo, Heather. Well done. And this is the type of photo that you can take either with an expensive camera or with a completely inexpensive camera or with your phone. You, you don't need to have all the expensive gear. From Indranil Chakraborty, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous, super sharp photo. And again, it's not necessarily a macro. Uh, you don't necessarily need the expensive lenses for this, but you know, it. I almost don't even need to say anything. It's just nature's beauty at its absolute best. Uh, this really 
interesting i guess it's a moth and not a butterfly or maybe it's a butterfly and not a moth i'm not really sure this is from the facebook account of iSmooth driver and i don't think that's the photographer's real name because i can see a signature here and it doesn't look like that but well done what an amazing photo i i really really like this you're kind of exposing a whole new world to the viewer a, a world that is not normally seen from Jill Sestak she has two and she was experimenting with bubbles I think it was on a freezing day where it was uh, the temperatures were below freezing and like talk about art this is just gorgeous and then this uh, these ice crystals really really beautiful from Callens Flavis I can't remember what the description said on this and I'm not even sure what this is. Oh, it's a phone. It's a phone with water on it and with these lights in the background that are blown out. I'm guessing this was taken inside the house. Like talk about not needing to travel far. I'm seeing here Todd Maloney photography, but for some reason the notation I have is Callens Flavis, but um, I'm going to go with Todd Maloney on this one as as the photographer. So sorry for the mix up there. From Kirsi Virta, really beautiful uh, photo with all of these water drops that are here that provide contrast from the really dark leaves and the one splash of color with the red. Really creative. From Kurt Cope some mushrooms that are nicely lit up with warm color really nice from lee jorgensen lee creates some amazing photographic fine art images and this is no exception this is just an absolute beauty here with the center of the blossom being in sharp focus and then the outside being out of focus so that it focuses the viewer's eye right on the middle really really nice from leaf ingevald skog uh, we have two from him, and uh, I think Leif is in either Norway or Sweden. I think Norway. Beautiful water drop. I love photos, actually, of water drops. They're so interesting. And this probably is a macro because it is so close up. But uh, look at those gorgeous shades of green and yellow and this interesting water drop in the middle. J just really beautiful artwork. And likewise with this one from Leif. Beautiful photo with beautiful shades of green. Louise McDonald. I'm thinking this is a dragonfly. I think it's a dragonfly. Yes, I think they have four wings. Gorgeous, gorgeous photo. I would actually really like to know how you took this with that stark black background and these beautiful shades of pink and purple and blue sort of rainbow colors. Incredible. Mike Belshaw, uh, another dragonfly, and I love this. Just a gorgeous photo again. Notice that the background is so blown out that you don't see anything which creates that real sense of contrast and makes the dragonfly, the main subject, stand out even more on in the photo. There, there's nothing to distract the viewer's eye in the background because of the very, very shallow depth of field that Mike used for this photo. Roger Langsbury took this one. I think this is so cool. This, this little caterpillar that's crawled up the beanstalk here and is munching away on whatever this is. I don't know if it's a green tomato. Just living its little life, enjoying eating, and along comes the camera to show us that that microscopic little world. I think this is just great. Good one, Roger. From Sue Skimika. Shimika, this bird is gorgeous. Look at these beautiful color tones in the feathers of the bird and contrasting with the different color tones in the background. I love this photo. So, so well done. We're getting near the end here. Only a few more left. Uh, Timothy DeHaan. I have three from Timothy DeHaan. He is the the reigning champion of shooting small, going small. And uh, his wife has a garden that and obviously his wife is a gardener extraordinaire and Timothy has the opportunity to shoot all of these images of his wife's flowers and he has created some absolutely incredible fine art pieces like this one here and like this one like that it's just beyond words how beautiful this one is with the level of detail how sharp that flower is uh, what makes it so interesting are the repeating patterns that are going around in the circle, all just repeating uh, in a concentric circle. Absolutely stunning. Two more left. And my friend Tremaine Tanner, 
from South Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. And this one of a B that is nice and tack sharp and in focus with a blown out background, beautiful color tones as well. And the last one is from Yvonne Struemk Eschenbach. And it's a beautiful hummingbird that she was able to capture in flight. So these are all examples of going small. So when you think that there is nothing worthwhile to a photograph that's near your house, think again, because when you go small, you have a whole new world of photographs that you can be taking. Were those not some absolutely amazing photographs? And I'm certainly proud of all of those photographers for the success that they have in being able to create their own fine art images. Now, getting back to the Facebook group, we have a very clear mandate. It's important that every group has a why. Like it's not good enough just to have a group for the sake of having a group and everyone posts their photos there and hopes that they get likes and comments. We need collectively within our group a why and we came up with one and our why is this. We help people to become award-winning photographers. So no matter where you're at in your photography, if you're just starting out or if you're already advanced, you want to get to the next level, whatever that next level may be, and we are here to help you. So head on over to the Tim's Photos Academy Facebook group, or if you're seeing this sometime in the future, it's going to be called the Photography Academy Facebook group. I will see you in my next video, but please do give this video a like and uh, leave a comment and please do subscribe. Take care. Bye-bye.